it's a real pleasure uh, having you here and, um, and also uh, for those who are uh, connected uh, online i know that uh, for some uh, of the attendees virtual attendees this is a prohibitive time um, so uh, i would like to give the floor to atish Dabulkar, who is our director of ictp for a general welcome okay good morning everybody welcome uh, it's a great pleasure for me to inaugurate this uh, particular uh, spring college on complex system, sorry, physics of complex systems. Uh, because this is the first activity of ICTP uh, that we are holding uh, really in person after uh, uh, two years of COVID. And uh, as I understand, this is the 10th edition of this uh, uh, very uh, nice school on an important topic. And as I understand, this year we'll have about 30 participants uh, who will participate uh, in person and about more than close to 150 online yeah. from all over the world. So uh, I am really happy. Welcome all of you. I'm sure you'll enjoy this uh, college. Uh, we have many distinguished speakers, uh, five speakers. Uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to, uh, first of all, also thank our administration. I think our uh, head of administration was going to come to make this possible to hold such a workshop in person. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, technical details that you have to look after when it comes to COVID regulations. And uh, so welcome, and I wish you a very productive uh, school. Uh, in the coming days. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you, Atish. So uh, let me, as Atish uh, was saying, uh, this is the first activity, and it has been uh, really uh, somewhat of a tour de force for our administration. I mean, uh, you cannot imagine how much uh, work uh, is uh, behind uh, uh, the scene, but uh, especially from our administration. But uh, we are really happy that uh, we managed it and that you are here. So uh, let me give you some general uh, uh, information about uh, the Spring College. So first of all, uh, uh, these are the people. Uh, oh, uh, is not sharing probably. So let me start again. Um, where is it? Huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. So okay. So first of all, uh, so these are the people to blame if anything goes wrong, and um, then uh, we have uh, very general support from uh, Polytechnic of Torino and uh, uh, Université Franco Italienne. Uh, that were also managed by Alessandro Pellizzola at Politecnico and Dominic Muhanna. And, uh, and then uh, uh, we, uh, we had uh, very substantial help uh, from our uh, secretary team. Is, uh, I would not say holy trinity, but I mean it's a trinity, it's three people. We worked uh, very, very hard uh, to make uh, to make this possible, and so if you have uh, any question, you can uh, on uh, say administrative details, you can uh, uh, write to them. And uh, so uh, I think uh, um, well, this is the pro. It's not sharing. Uh, I don't know why it's not sharing. Should I share it again? Uh, let me share it again. Ah, the Okay. 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 So this is uh, the program, 
as you see, uh, we have uh, five speakers, five courses. Uh, and um, so the course of uh, uh, Tanya Sharpie, uh, which will be in the afternoons, uh, is, uh, is actually, she, is, she uh, could not come to Trieste, so she will give her lectures online. Um, and, uh, but I will be in presence. So I will do the teaching assistant uh, for her course. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, also uh, we have uh, Gulse. Gulse is, uh, is, is she here? So, no, not yet. So we have a teaching assistant uh, for the course of uh, David Wolpert, who uh, will also give some uh, lectures uh, on uh, uh, introductory lectures. And also, well, uh, Stefano Ruffo will uh, uh, say this, uh, uh, some of uh, the last three lectures of his course will be given by Nicolò De Fenu, right? Okay, so then, uh, uh, well, this is uh, uh, a general uh, uh, outline of the course. Uh, as you see, lectures are uh, one hour, 45 minutes, uh, but uh, I leave it, uh, we leave it to the speakers uh, and you to uh, split this lecture, this, this lot of one hour, 45 minutes, eventually in two, or to start earlier, or to, start, or, or to, to finish before. But the important thing uh, is that uh, uh, at 10.45, there is a coffee break for you, uh, which will be upstairs uh, and uh, with some... Uh, um, um, calories for <laughs> for your brain, and um, so essentially from uh, uh, ten forty five to uh, eleven, we have a uh, you have a coffee break, and um, okay. So uh, some uh, rules. Okay, so. Uh, it will take some time. So your attendance is compulsory. So you are supposed to attend uh, each lecture. Okay, so and please uh, uh, be on time. Lectures start at 9 a.m. Uh, they start when, when the program, uh, uh, at the time of the program. Uh, I know it's a very heavy schedule for four weeks. Uh, it will be very intense. Uh, but uh, um, uh, this is also uh, for the, also you should consider that the lecturers also put a lot of effort in preparing the lectures and, and being on time. And, uh, okay, so uh, still not, uh, um, uh, my screen sharing is paused. Okay, I don't know why. Um, okay, so then uh, the, there are final exams, uh, which are uh, uh, compulsory for all of you in presence. And, um, and these are uh, essentially marked in bold here, okay? So at the, first, at the end of the, first, uh, uh, of the second week, uh, you will have uh, the first two exams. Then uh, the exam of uh, Professor Sharpie will be at the beginning of the fourth week, uh, and the last two courses uh, will have their exam at the end uh, of the master of the spring college. Okay, so uh, we have uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, online participants, uh, and um, uh, and we set up uh, a Slack uh, space for them. Uh, so that uh, they can interact uh, with the speakers, especially those that uh, cannot attend uh, live uh, uh, the lectures uh, because of time zone difference. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, so, um, so essentially, uh, you, uh, the virtual participants uh, received uh, a a link uh, to connect to this uh, Slack workspace uh, uh, in order so that they can ask questions uh, offline uh, 
uh, to the to the lectures, uh, and these lecture these questions will be dealt uh, by the, the lecturers uh, either uh, online uh, or uh, at the next lecture, uh, um, um, either offline or uh, in the next lecture online. Okay, so uh, then. Uh, well, this is really very important information, so I should share again. Um, uh, I don't know why this is... Ah, okay, so this is working now. Uh, so, um, lunch. Okay, so uh, lunch and dinner are uh, uh, offered uh, in the main building uh, of ICTP, which is called Leonardo Building, which is uphill. Okay, some, well, the diploma students know very well where it is, uh, master students also, maybe you remember. And uh, so there are two ways uh, to go to, uh, to the main building. One is uh, uh, through the park, and um, so you should go down uh, to, the, to the harbor. And then uh, there, there are stairs that enter into the park. This is a very nice walk. And, uh, and then there are stairs uh, that lead you to this uh, uh, Leonardo building. Maybe, I mean, uh, we, we can do this walk today together if you want. The other possibility is to take uh, a shuttle uh, that, uh, 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 that brings you uh, from, uh, no, it's not working. So maybe I'll just do it like this. So there will be shuttles uh, ready at uh, uh, quarter to one uh, at the reception, out of the reception, that can bring you up uh, uh, to the main, uh, to the Leonardo building. Okay, so also in this building, uh, which is called Fermi building, uh, is the administration and the medical service, uh, uh, especially if you, um, I mean, uh, we are uh, unfortunately still living uh, in uh, COVID times. So we should uh, pay attention to keep this place uh, a COVID free place. Okay, this, this uh, is a responsibility of each of us. Huh? really to be uh, extremely careful about, uh, about this because uh, this could uh, hamper the whole uh, Spring College. And uh, unfortunately, I don't see uh, our uh, head of administration here who could give us uh, some more precise instructions on this, uh, but, um, uh, but well, maybe uh, we will tell you more about this. For, for the moment, just let's keep uh, the usual, uh, uh, I mean, the measure that you learned so well uh, in these two years. Okay, having said this, uh, I think uh, we can start and uh, enjoy the college. And uh, uh, any problem, uh, just uh, let us know, okay? Thank you very much. And, uh, well, the floor is, uh, is yours. One, one thing I don't understand, maybe you know, uh, is whether speakers uh, can uh, take their mask off. You know, Atish? Uh, you put me on spot. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, I will keep it for a while if... Uh, Is there a point? No. Okay. Okay. Ah, Lila. Okay. Okay. So you can hear me. Welcome to the first uh, series of lectures of this uh, Spring College and. Uh, I didn't really realize that uh, for Italy, it's the, uh, the day after the anniversary of the start of the epidemics. So 
it was exactly yesterday, two years ago, that we got the news from Codogno that of the first uh, serious case uh, in, uh, of, of many infected people. And uh, I hope, really hope that this nightmare will finish soon and uh, I, uh, getting together uh, is a good sign that something is uh, moving on. So, uh, so, uh, so you can see my name, uh, Stefano Ruffo. I'm, I'm teaching uh, statistical mechanics at CISA. Uh, and uh, beginning this year, I will also teach a course of uh, dynamical systems at the University of Trieste in a couple of weeks. So my, I think one can see also the blackboard, no? So my email is uh, rufo at sisa.it and you can reach me for any question, but I'm also registered on Slack so those of you who uh, uh, are connected to Slack can ask questions also, also on Slack. So this will be a, a sort of a crash course in uh, long-range interactions. And uh, you will see the topic, uh, what it is, uh, in a while, uh, but not for Advertising, I would like to show you a book which was published a few years ago in Oxford University Press. I'm one of the author. And uh, it collects uh, a series of, of uh, results that were obtained beginning in the 90s in this, uh, in this field of, uh, of research. So, um, the lecture, I will give six lectures, six lectures, and uh, uh, it, uh, the first one will be a sort of a introductory lectures on, uh, on generic features of long-range interacting systems, and, uh, uh, and the three lectures uh, Ex, uh, on, on quantum will be given next week by Nicolo De Fenu. So Nicolo should have been here, but uh, he was called for an interview in Houston, and today he's in Houston. <laughs> and then uh, since he's he managed to go to the US. He will stay the next week also in, uh, in Boston for another interview. He is currently a, a postdoc in, uh, in, uh, in ATH Zurich. And uh, so his topic will be uh, specifically quantum long, uh, quantum long range interactions. Uh, I think he is also available. Uh, uh, especially when here it's night for, <laughs> for uh, discussions and uh, questions you, you might have. I, I will provide to you his email also for, uh, for connection uh, to him. So, so let's start. Uh, I hope it, it can go. I see I have the same problem as uh, Matteo. Stop sharing. No, the arrows don't work. So you can see in, in the in this form, no? But if I go full screen, uh, there, there are problems. OK, but until it is visible, it's OK. OK, so I will uh, begin by 
sort of general introduction, uh, some uh, in in which sense I, I, I will talk I will talk about long range interactions, but there are, there are very several definitions in the literature. So I want to be precise uh, to what uh, definitions I will. Uh, uh, make reference when I speak of long-range interactions. And then I will, uh, 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 I think I will spend uh, the first half an hour to, to, the, to the first, discussing about the first uh, topics. Some of the, uh, some of the information will be on the, on the slides. And some other one I will give on the blackboard. So I've prepared some notes. And also, at the end of this lecture, I will leave you with a few exercises to do. And uh, uh, I hope that you, you will be able to do them easily. And, uh, and uh, of course, if you have questions and uh, I'm available do, uh, even during the day for to reply to, to the questions. Okay, so wow, what's happening on the screen? There is, there is. Okay. <laughs> okay. I accept any contribution from you, even <laughs> this one. <laughs> It's, it's okay. Okay, so so how to start? So it's um, uh, I like to start with stories and uh, and uh, a story st uh, on uh, on my involvement in the study of this topic begins here in Trieste. So I was attending a a very general conference on StatMec. And uh, I, at the time, I was performing numerical experiments on a, on a, on a, on a model that I will uh, tell you about maybe in the third lecture. And uh, I was obtaining from my data, it was a computer simulation, a negative specific heat. So for me, it was a sort of, uh, of mystery. And I was <laughs> very worried that my program was uh, not working and was giving uh, numbers from God. So, <laughs> so the, there was really no, no. So, and I, I was lucky enough to sit uh, near a guy uh, in astrophysics. And this shows that interdisciplinarity is very important. <laughs> and uh, so uh, uh, he asked me, what are you working on? And I wanted to be pro provocative and I say, I'm working on negative specific heat. So, and then he looked at me and he said, whoa, that's standard for us. <laughs> so, so this opened to me the door to long range interactions. And in fact, uh, the statistical mechanics of, of uh, self-gravitating systems is a very interesting topic, but very difficult one for several features that gravity has, Newtonian gravity has. In particular, uh, the fact that uh, the gra uh, Newtonian gravity is a singular at, uh, at zero distance. Uh, so particles tend to collapse. In a, in a core because they attract each other and the attraction is more and more as you get close. And another feature which is uh, difficult in, uh, I see another sign, at the end it will be a picture for, them for a museum. <laughs> Beautiful colors. So, so I, uh, Another feature of, of uh, gravitational systems is uh, uh, self-gravitational systems is the fact that uh, uh, we live in three dimensions. Newtonian gravity is in three dimensions. And uh, 
if you run a code with self-gravitating particles, though, so the interaction of this V1 over R in 3D, orbits are not closed and orbits are not bounded. So, so it happens that if you start a simulation with, uh, say, 1,000 particles, 1,000 Newtonian particles, which is a small simulation, at the end of the game, you will get maybe two-thirds of the particle in the cluster, but some of them will have evaporated outside. So and this is a very bad feature for statistical mechanics because you would like to keep the particle confined in a box. Statistical mechanics concern boxes. You learn it from kinetic theory. So what people are bounded to do is to put uh, is to put the self-gravitating gas in a box uh, and, uh, and let the particle either uh, be absorbed or uh, rebound on the boundary of the, of the, of the box. So, and this is a, a field in itself. It's a, it's a very complicated area of research. Another person I could have met and I didn't meet of the, at, the, at that meeting, uh, was a person in plasma physics. Plasma physics is another field of research uh, where uh, long-range interactions in the sense that I will uh, define are at stake. Uh, a plasma is... Uh, is matter, ionized matter. And uh, charges are free to fly. And you get positive and negative charges. So it's really, I'm starting with physics one. Huh? So you have positive and negative charges. And uh, what tend to happen if you have a system of positive and negative charges, there is a tendency to screen. So, so for instance, if these are ions which are heavier, there will be a cloud of minus charges around the ions. And this is called uh, the Debye sphere. And the interaction outside this device sphere, there are several pluses and there are several minuses. And globally, this is, uh, this is neutral. So what will happen if you put together a system of positive and negative charges, they will tend to form a, a clouds of uh, neutral charge, and all the excess charge will be pushed to the boundaries. So if there is an excess charge, it will be pushed to the boundaries. This is what I teach, for instance, to first-year physics students when I say, if you, if you have a conductor, the charge will be on the boundary. Okay. Uh, there is a strong relation here. There is dynamics, but OK. But it's very important in plasma physics are instabilities that arise when, when the charge is globally unbalanced. This can happen in several regions of the, of the, of the plasma, especially near the boundaries. So plasma physicists has, um, have a very strong interest in what they call a one-component plasma. One-component plasma. Uh, 
And the one component plasma is a system of electrons, which is uh, confined with a strong uh, electric and magnetic field. So there is a region of magnetic field B in the vacuum. And as you know, the electrons wiggles around these uh, magnetic lines. These are magnetic lines. And then you put, you put uh, some, uh, sorry, yes, some electric field that bounds the, the electrons in a certain area. This is what is called the one component plasma. And uh, the dynamics of this one component plasma falls into the realm of, uh, of long range interactions because the electrons, for instance, what they do, uh, maybe I will show you a movie at some point. They look at the charge in this, uh, in this uh, uh, plane, orthogonal, more or less orthogonal to the magnetic field lines. And, uh, and they look at concentration of charge. And, you, and curiously, this charge obeys the Euler equation. Which, uh, which is used uh, also to understand climate on the Earth's surface for the motion of the, of the atmosphere. So you see very beautiful vortices, cyclones of, and anticyclones of charge in this, uh, in this uh, plane. Okay, so this is as for motivation. But then, of course, as a theoretical statistical physicist, I, I did want, let's try again to, to share uh, if it works. I don't know. No. Okay, so I will go on with. So I need to define uh, my, my setting. So it's already 20 minutes <laughs> of mo for motivations. So my setting will be very general and I will uh, define uh, uh, long range interactions by the potential. Sorry, I will put again. Okay, so let's take matter in a, in a certain volume and uh, particles interact each other with, uh, with uh, binary interaction. So I have particle, one particle here, one particle I and particle J. There will be a certain distance R between the two particles. And, uh, and the potential is uh, between the particles is V of R, 1 over R to the alpha at large distance. So I concentrate on, uh, on matter which interacts with uh, power law. So alpha equal 1 for both. Uh, Newton gravity and Coulomb 
And uh, there are not many examples in nature, but one interesting one is alpha equal three, which is dipolar interaction. There? Ah, in the room you don't see, okay. Ah, I don't use it, so we can uh, put it down. It's better now? Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm used uh, to use all, all the blackboard. First of all, this is in three dimensions, right? In three dimensions, yes. Three dimensions. Yes, you will see also what happens in in uh, other dimensions. Because uh, for the moment, I I fix the dimension. And uh, okay, so for instance, uh, in d dimensions, in this uh, slide, you see uh, the re a region of uh, values of alpha for which uh, you can do a very simple calculation, which is uh, skip drafted here. So I would like to compute the energy per part of, uh, of matter that is homogeneously distributed between uh, an inner radius, uh, small del delta, and uh, an outer radius, R, okay? So what I do, I do an integral. I do an integral, you see it here, uh, between delta and R of uh, uh, in D dimensions, uh, DDR, which is uh, dx, dy, d times times rho, uh, okay, I take matter homogeneously distributed times one over r to the alpha. This will be the, uh, so in matter, here I didn't put interaction, let's say is coupled with interaction j, okay? Or g or any, any interaction j, okay? So, so it's very easy to see what happens if there is a spherical symmetry. This integral will give you, uh, I didn't put the expression, but, but you, you can derive it, uh, can look, ah, this could be an exercise. What, what, what is this quantity here? So, so is the angular volume uh, of, uh, in d dimensions, times rho, and then you, you count, okay, this is uh, 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 d minus alpha, and you have to estimate d minus alpha between r and d, okay? So you get, uh, as an estimate of this integral, uh, rho j, recoupling, okay, divided by d minus alpha is a constant, is not important, and then you have r uh, to the d minus alpha minus delta to the d minus alpha. Okay, now you understand why I have put this uh, delta here, because it, it serves as a regularization of the interaction at short distances, because there could be divergences of this interaction at, uh, at small delta. So for the moment, I keep this delta fixed. And this is something which is really done in practice in the two examples that I've shown. For instance, in Newtonian gravity, the potential is regularized uh, at short distance in several different ways. Or uh, the particles, when they arrive at very short distance, they interact uh, in a different way. 
So they could be, for instance, uh, hard particles that when they get close, they collide. Or uh, they could be soft particles. When they get close, they interact with a different potential. Or matter could be quantum. Uh, and then at very short distance, you will have the effects either of the Pauli principle, for instance, if you, if you take fermions, or of the Heisenberg principle, because you cannot follow the trajectories and uh, the velocities of the particles when they get too close. So I exclude this part. It's a phenomenological parameter. But what is important is this part here. And it is clear that uh, when alpha is larger than d, when alpha is larger than d, then epsilon goes to a constant. When r goes to infinity, OK? When r goes to infinity and alpha is larger than d, this exponent is negative. And so as r goes to infinity, this term drops down, and you get a finite epsilon. OK, this uh, property was uh, realized by Gibbs himself, the founder of statistical mechanics. It's not easy to find the quote, but if you are patient enough and you go to the very first rigorous book in statistical mechanics, which is uh, the book of Gibbs, you find this remark that the interaction should decrease faster than, than three in, 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 uh, in three dimensions. Uh, and, uh, uh, and this was uh, known to the physicists who have uh, 50 years ago, physicists and mathematicians like Michael Fisher, Joe Lebowitz, and David Ruel, in the beginning of the 60s, were setting the base for the study of matter using what is called the thermodynamic limit. Uh, and they realized that uh, they could get uh, thermodynamic potentials, in, like here, we get the energy. Uh, only if the hypothesis of uh, decreasing fast with, with the distance of uh, the interaction potential was, was made. Of course, if the decay, I've chosen the, the power law uh, instead of an exponential, because of course the exponential would fall, for instance, Yukawa potential would call would uh, get down even faster than, uh, than uh, the exponential. Okay. This is a sort of critical situation in which uh, I'm uh, testing the stability of my thermodynamic description. Okay, so most of what has been done in the 60s and the 70s on the on the short range interacting case, which is alpha le larger than d, uh, is, uh, 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 is very interesting, but it will not be the subject of uh, my lecture course. Because the subject of my lecture course will be the, the case in which alpha is less than d, or maybe. OK, I will introduce a quantity, which is called sigma, which is alpha minus d. So, and if sigma is positive, I'm a little bit invading the region of, uh, of uh, the founder of statistical mechanics. Because you see, I'm going in a region where the energy per particle is well defined. But I will reach only a value that I call sigma star. 
And if sigma is less than sigma star, uh, and the sigma star will be defined depending on the problem, and you will hear a lot about sigma star in the lectures by Nicolò De Fenu, you can get collective phenomena that are due to long-range interactions, although the system is, uh, is uh, extensive. So although the system energy per particle is, uh, is well defined. For instance, uh, an, an exercise that I will do pretty soon, very interesting one, maybe not well known, the fact that there can be phase transition in one dimension in this uh, region between sigma star uh, and zero, sigma star and zero. So phase transitions in one dimension. Who, heard, who has heard about phase transition in one dimension? Is there in the audience someone who knows? No. So what, what would you argue? First of all, you know what is phase transition. I think so, OK. And there is an argument which is due to Landau, to Landau and Lifshitz, which tells that if the interaction is short range, and I will repeat the argument. I, I will leave the argument at the end of the lecture as an exercise. So first exercise check or exercise rather than exercise check an expression for omega d and study this expression and see that in three dimensions uh, it is the angular volume of, of the of the sphere and so on. Uh, in Italian we say solid angle. I don't know if uh, <laughs> it's uh, spread out in the world <laughs> this uh, <laughs> this term. Okay, so, so what happens if uh, alpha is less than d? Now let's take over again. Uh, so what happens is alpha is less than d, s or equal d, and zero. Then uh, it's easy to check that the energy per particle, it's here, is the volume to the 1 minus alpha over d. This is a simple calculation. The volume, if you want, is r to the d. Okay? So you can express the energy per particle both using the volume and uh, using the radius of the region where matter is, uh, is contained. So if alpha is less than d, this is less than 1. So 1 minus alpha over d is a number less than 1. I'm not considering uh, alpha negative, OK? I'm considering alpha positive. And of course, I could include alpha 0. Alpha 0 is a very interesting case in which uh, each particle interacts with all other particles. And there is no decay of the interaction. So alpha equals 0 is what usually called the, the mean field, or all to all. OK? The mean field or all to all interaction. So OK, what can you do if? Uh, if this happens, so if energy is uh, super, super extensive in the volume, so grows with the volume, and the solution to this problem was uh, given long ago. OK. OK, let's uh, first of all try to talk about the physics, OK, and then give the solution which is interesting mathematical solution, but it's a mathematical solution, and I would like to understand the physics. OK, usually uh, in nature, we have systems that are described by Hamiltonians. 
by energy functions, and the energy function is made of kinetic energy plus potential energy. Okay. Kinetic energy in standard conditions is the sum of uh, is the sum of uh, single particle contributions, the velocity squares of each particles. Okay? So this part of the energy is goes like n, okay, like the number of particles because you are summing contributions of, uh, of each particle. If I'm going too slow, please don't uh, <laughs> tell me. I, you are going too slow. I, I know all these, so I will go faster. Because the slides, I have 20 slides, and I am now at uh, 9.39, <laughs> and I have covered two slides. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm filling up with, uh, with the notions, OK? what is not on the slides, but it is in the book. And I will give you the PDF of the book so, <laughs> so in, for free. So no. <laughs> OK. By the way, the, the, just to relax for a while, you see this beautiful picture. This is an artist that I met. His name is Nils Sudo from Finland. And uh, I like very much uh, his land art. This is oranges, and he rotated the, the camera in order to make a sort of cluster of particles. And this reminded me the clustering phenomena in self-gravitating systems. So I asked him, can you give me the, the rights to put it on the cover? And he said, OK, yes. So, and then I said, OK, please contact Oxford and tell them you want to be paid for that. So and then he contacted and lost contact with him, and so finally he got to, he got to pay, be paid by Oxford. And then I asked him how much. He said, hundred dollars. I said, oh, these Oxford guys, these are really bad guys. I mean, you should have asked at least five hundred dollars for for getting your cover. No, I was so excited that my cover finishes on on a book. Okay, but it's a uh, I like it very much. You can look at the, at the arts of this guy. OK. Is it, this is what my friend Jan Levine from Brazil calls a core halo distribution. So there are sometimes in, in self-gravitating systems uh, situations in which they form a core, very dense core, and then there is a halo around. And, uh, you will, you will see that they can arise in much simpler situations. OK, let's go back to my Hamiltonian. And of course, it is in, since this is per potentials, this goes, goes like n squared. OK, so already there is a problem at this level, because uh, if you let n grow, and uh, there is no way that you get an energy per particle. This part of the energy will keep growing, keep growing and keep growing, and dominate over the kinetic energy. One could say, OK, no bad, because as potential energy grows, matter will uh, uh, get colder and colder. And finally, it will reach zero temperature because kinetic energy will be extremely small with respect to, to potential energy. So do you see around that we are all at zero temperature? No, I would say no, OK? So in fact, what happens is that as you increase system size, because of short range interaction, the system is chopped into parts. And uh, equilibrium will be an equilibrium with a non-zero temperature because of that, because kinetic energy can compete with, uh, with potential energy. But if you don't have additivity, 
which is the first hypothesis that you find in any book of statistical mechanics, which is a consequence of the interaction to decay faster than D, you won't get the equilibrium that we see around us because the, the energy will dominate and kinetic energy will be dropped off. And uh, also, you could not see boiling water. You put fire under a pot and you would like to see water to boil and then to become vapor, so to go through a phase transition. And this you cannot appear because the system will be dominated by energy and entropy will not play any role in, in, a, in the matter. So it won't be able to compete with energy because again entropy, which is combinatorial, grows with N. And another consequence of this effect is that since free energy is U min minus TS, U goes like N squared, S goes like N, and the system will be dominated by energy. Okay. So you won't see phase transitions. So what was the idea? And the idea is due to a fantastic mathematician that I, I encourage to read the, the biography of this guy, which is really impressive. So he was born and lived part of his life in a country which is uh, nowadays in big trouble. <laughs> Uh, he was known uh, to the mathematicians in, uh, in uh, Leopoli, in Lvov, uh, or Lviv, uh, in, uh, now in Ukraine. At that time, it uh, was part of Poland, and, uh, and then emigrated to the US. And he was, uh, I mean, he's responsible for so many contributions to random process, uh, Feynman cuts integrals, and so on. This is really a minor contribution. He got uh, a very strange and funny idea. So, okay, if the energy is, uh, uh, so there is the energy per particle, look, look, go like this, and so the energy is uh, n times times this, and you can rewrite n in terms of volume. So you see in this slide uh, that uh, if alpha is larger than d, as I was telling, the energy goes like volume. If alpha is smaller than d, the energy goes like volume to the 2 minus alpha over d energy. Now I'm, I'm playing with extensive variables. So in general, I will follow the rule that A is an extensive variable and A is an intensive variable, okay? So I will try to keep the two definitions during all my talk. Eh? So, uh, so the free energy goes like the volume uh, because the entropy goes like the volume. Uh, the energy goes like the volume, everything is okay if alpha is uh, larger than D. But what can I do if alpha is smaller than D? And what Katz proposed is to rescale, to rescale the coupling. To rescale the coupling uh, in such a way that uh, you get a free energy that increases with the volume. And that's a very simple exercise. You can do it. You just rescale the coupling. I don't write it. It's called the cut streak. It is a mathematical trick. You rescale the coupling by V to the alpha over D minus one. And if you do this, you get the free energy uh, that goes like the volume. Alternatively, what could you do? 
you could rescale the temperature, okay, uh, by one minus alpha over d in such a way that the free energy now grows like two minus alpha over d. It, grow, it, it grows like the energy. So it's, a, it's an unusual scaling for the free energy. But it is, allows the temperature, which now depends on the size, to reach the scale of the energy, of the potential energy. So I believe that you are not used to neither of both. So where is in nature an interaction that depends on the size? That's why it's a trick. And uh, on the other hand, if you measure temperature with a thermometer, you believe, uh, and we have a thermometer at the entrance <laughs> of the building, you believe that this does not depend on the size of the body that, to which the temperature is measured. Okay, so both are tricks. And why you do these tricks? The, you do these tricks because you want to go to the thermodynamic limit without encountering the problem of competition, of lack of, of competition between kinetic energy and potential energy, and without encountering the problem of lack of competition of entropy with, uh, uh, with energy. Okay? But then you know that also the thermodynamic limit is a fiction. We are made of moles of matter. So none of us, I invite you to compute how many moles you are instead of kilos. But none of us is an infinite number of moles. So. You can play the cast trick at the reverse. Once you get a very, very large system that you get convergence, you fix the size of the system, and you read back what are the intensive variables in terms of extensive of variables, given the volume, given the finite size of the system. So that's the idea. You do the trick in order for the limits to converge. It's a typical mathematical trick. And uh, once you reach the limit with intensive variable, you fix the sides and you read back the extensive variable of the system. This is uh, the idea. This is the conceptual idea. It has been done. It has been done very successfully, even in more sophisticated ways. For instance, for the theory of liquids, there is a very important series of papers, mathematical papers, where, uh, which is, by the way, the only way of getting phase transition rigorously in, uh, in liquids. Okay, so, but I don't want to, to enter in this. Uh, so, I have put here the slide to be more specific on, uh, on another feature. I have sp mostly spoken about, uh, about uh, extensivity, so the fact that the, I want to increase the number of particles, the volumes, in order to get this, the density and so on. But I didn't speak about another feature of, uh, which is, in fact, even more important, now that we are able, by the cut streak, to perform the thermodynamic limit, I, I think I will stop at 10, and then I will do five minutes break, OK? So be prepared for, for a stop in uh, five minutes. You should resist to, and accept the cut streak for a while, and then you will destroy it, OK, in five, in five minutes. OK. So uh, 
And this, uh, this property has been, in some sense, it has been confused with extensivity. So if you open a book in StatMac, the two concepts are sort of superposed. So okay, if it is extensive, it's also additive. Okay. I would like to make an example, very simple example, can be more complicated examples, the simplest you can think where you see that they are not the same, okay? And the simplest example is the Curie-Weiss Hamiltonian. I leave uh, it on the... So the Curie-Weiss Hamiltonian is the simplest model of magnetism that you can think of. Spins, uh, you can think of them as uh, plus and minus variables, classical variables, interact all to all. And uh, I have put the cut streak in, the, in this Hamiltonian. Can one see where is the cut streak in this Hamiltonian? There is cuts hidden somewhere in the J over N, because uh, I've just said that uh, uh, the cut streak is to scale with my minus alpha over D, and this is a mean field all to all model, so alpha is zero, so is the n in, uh, in the interaction. So I think uh, all of you have been presented to the, to the Curie-Weiss model, uh, reading books of StatMec, but no one was aware that there is a cut streak in this <laughs> Hamiltonian. And uh, no one was aware that this is a, an example that contradicts chapter one of the book. Because chapter one begins by saying, we will treat in this book systems that are both extensive and uh, additive. And this is extensive, for sure, because the Hamiltonian grows like n, okay? The number of pairs grows like n squared, divide by n, Hamiltonian grows like n. But it's very simple to construct states. You can uh, play with, uh, with that. I have constructed the, the simplest one. I construct a state with zero magnetization. Zero magnetization, so the sum of the spins is zero. This Hamiltonian can be also written as a magnetization square. So if the magnetization is zero, also the Hamiltonian is zero, okay? So the two parameters, magnetization and uh, energy, are tightly related into this model. And I divide the system in two parts. And it's very simple to see that the energy of the total, which is zero magnetization, is zero, while the energy of the parts is minus j over a10. You can do the exercise of computing the energy in case of the two parts. And hence, the sum of the energies is not the total energy of the system. And even if you go to very large n, you will not solve the problem. That's because as you grow with the size of the system, there will be cross links between the two parts. There is no surface in this model. There is no surface in this model because there, there are all cross links so that this is not true. So, uh, sorry. the energy is minus j times n divided by n, right? Uh, magnetization is n. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, n is at the. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. It wa I was too fast, yes. It's not in the denominator. Anyway, you can check also. It might be a mistake, so please check. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that it's not going to zero and <laughs> minus j of minus because there is a minus in the Hamiltonian, okay. Which proves that, uh, okay. So, okay, then you say, oh, that's a disaster because no one uh, did this remark to the teacher, no? Look, this example contradicts the, the chapter one of the book. But there is no disaster, fortunately, and Katz was right. In, and uh, that's a very, very, 
interesting bona fide model that has been studied also mathematically and gives a phase transition of second order of the Curie Weiss uh, type, mean field type, which is uh, a good description of what happens in, in, in magnetism in this uh, limit of the, of, the, of the mean field. Now, you will learn at the end of the, of the this series of talk, uh, maybe already on, on lecture two, that uh, we have been very, very lucky to use uh, spins uh, that can take only two values because if we would have used the spins that can take three values, would, would have come in big troubles. And in particular, you will see that this is already an example. It's called the POTS model, where, which describes some mixtures, some other different systems and, and magnetic, also ma some magnetic systems, uh, that the entropy, uh, I mean thermodynamic, thermodynamic entropy, entropy as a function of energy, is non-concave. So for this case, it's, uh, it's an extreme situation where uh, the entropy, although there is a second order phase transition, the entropy remains concave. And I will compute the entropy for the curie weiss model. You will see it in many different ways. And the entropy remains, remains uh, con uh, concave. So all thermodynamics works, uh, although the system is uh, non-additive. So it's not necessary that thermodynamic works if the system is non-additive. So it can happen that if the system is non-additive, you get standard thermodynamics, and there's no, no problem with thermodynamics. But there are cases, and I will show several, where if you violate additivity, you get non-concave entropies. And this is the case of, uh, this is the right time to finish, self-gravitating system, one component plasmas, Euler equations, and many others. OK, so in the second part of the talk, I will go on with the, with the slides. And now I leave five minutes of break. I don't know what we do during the break. You, ju you just sit or questions or, first of all, questions, yes? OK, so there is um, Angelo Rosa that uh, would like uh, to make uh, a brief uh, comment. Angelo, are you there? Uh, yes, can you hear me, Matteo? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Can we okay, have, so uh, can you uh, hear so Angelo? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I can hear Angelo. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, welcome everybody. I'm uh, Angelo Rosa. I'm uh, oh. organizing Mr. Matteo. Just a moment, Angelo. Angelo. Uh, can we have, uh, I'm trying to ask, uh, can we have the, because we have the audio only from your computer, right? So but we hear, we can hear. Hello? Hello? Angelo. But if, yes. you, if you open the audio. Hello? No, no. no yes. there's... Uh, maybe. Yes. Hello, Angelo? Yes, uh, Matteo, can you hear me? In the hall, yes. can you hear in the hall? Uh, not not uh, quite. Uh, maybe this one? Hello? Now, can you, can you hear me better? Uh, <laughs> see, just a moment, Angelo. We are... Uh, Uh, hello, try now? Yes. Ah, very good. Uh, great. Uh, go ahead. Okay, th thank you very much. 
Um, so uh, my name is Angelo Ross. I'm organizing with um, Matteo with the, this uh, Spring College. So today I couldn't be there uh, with you because I'm recovering from, uh, unfortunately, from a small accident. Uh, but um, so what I want to tell you that, uh, um, so I'm, I'm in, uh, working uh, in, in CIS and uh, uh, so we are organizing uh, a visit uh, to, to the CISA labs of neuroscience uh, that will be for the third or fourth uh, week of the spring in college. So that will be in March. Uh, so I will let you know, and maybe I will coordinate, uh, we, for sure we'll coordinate with Matteo uh, to arrange the visits in, in safety. So probably I think it will be two groups of people. So to, to, to not get, to know, I mean, to, to avoid the big uh, gatherings. And so we'll let you know about that. And okay. enjoy the school and uh, the speakers. I think it's a really fantastic opportunity for all of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Angelo. Okay, so we take a uh, five minutes break. Very good. Bravo.